Good morning and welcome to another Knitting Pod. I am Lena, I'm coming to you from Boulder, Colorado. Happy New Year's, guys. I cannot believe it's 2023. Um, January happens every year, but it's always shocking. It always just seems to surprise me that we get another year. I don't know, I, I know that sounds crazy, but it's such a bittersweet moment because it's the end of all this intensely celebratory time of December and just the holidays in general. And then suddenly it's all over and we get January. And I loathe the words fresh start, but it's just, it's a time to reconsider. It's a second chance every time it happens and I am thrilled to be sitting down with you. Um, if you are here, if you are watching, thank you so much. I posted my first two videos in December. Um, it was a goal that I had for the whole year that I had been putting aside. So for myself, I wanted to show up and do it, uh, fulfill something that I had wanted for myself and honestly had no idea if even a single person would watch. And if you did watch, thank you so much. It means so much. Um, I love knitting so, so much. And to get to chit chat and share it with you means everything. So anyway, let's get going. I have so much knitting to talk about. This truly might be two episodes because I'm scared I'm gonna have too much and that it's gonna be too long and I really don't want it to be. So anyway, um, if you haven't watched the previous episode, at that time in mid-December, right when our kids got out of school, we were heading on a ski trip. We always go to the mountains for two weeks around this time of year to, you know, celebrate the holidays in the way that feels meaningful to us as a family. So it's on the road, pack up the car and go to the mountains and ski. And for me, try to get as much yarning in as humanly possible. And I am so happy to report it was a very productive two weeks yarn wise. Um, that's not always the case, but this time I was really conscious about making sure I did that for myself, that I didn't feel pressured to move any faster for other members of my family um, than I wanted to. And um, at the end of the last episode, I was chatting about what I wanted to knit in the car because the first part of our drive um, to Crested Butte was about four hours, and that is a lot of knitting time, y'all. So I wasn't gonna let that go without you know, knowing what I wanted to do. Um, so after a lot of back and forth of what I wanted to cast on, I decided to cast on the Home Camisole by Kadri. And I am happy to report, it is a gorgeous pattern. I love it so much. I have it right here. So the Home Camisole, top down camisole, it is in progress still, okay? So it looks a little um, in progress. It is a, um, like I said, top down, you start with one of these straps, then you make one cup, do the exact same for the other side, just kind of a mirror image. Then you connect them, then you do the same for the back. So the back and the front are the same. And then you, um, Join it all in the round and off you go with a gorgeous round and round stockinette um, piece that was exactly what I wanted for the car. I tend to get car sick. I even have to take some car sickness medication in order to knit because otherwise it's an impossibility for me. I get very motion sick. Um, but so I didn't want anything complicated. I had another project that I'll show you in a bit, the Trinigan that I've showed you in both past podcasts that I didn't want to work on because I didn't want to be dealing with two colors, constantly like switching back and forth and you know, you're cramped in your seat and you're trying to keep your yarn from getting tangled. I didn't want to deal with that. So I wanted something simple that I was pretty sure I'd almost get through on this trip. And this was that you guys it was 
such a lovely project. I made sure to do all this top, the cup shaping and work at home before we left, which took a, maybe two evenings. It's not difficult work at all. It's just a bit fussy um, in that you don't wanna be off on your stitch count. You don't wanna accidentally miss an increase or something because then one cup would not be exactly identical to the other and then you kind of had, I don't know, have to rip back or something not that fun. So I made sure to have that all and it worked out so lovely. I just, I loved knitting on it in the car. One thing that I've always wanted to work on was knitting without looking at my hands. I'm so jealous of people that can do that. It is kind of like a superpower, next level um, skill set from what I have as a knitter. Um, but it was an excellent chance to practice that because if you're prone to car, car sickness, you know that looking out into what you're driving past helps your brain kind of keep from getting nauseated. So unlike, you know, the advice of watch a TV show that you really want to watch, so you'll be looking away, it never works for me. But this really worked. I think I was able to knit without looking at my hands better than I ever have. Um, number one, it was simple stockinette. So it's just knitting, um, nothing complicated and no purling. So no bringing the yarn back and forth, um, just straight knitting. Number two, I think it helped because the yarn was not super fine or sticky or didn't tend towards splitting that much. It's like a light worsted weight, heavy DK kind of weight. Um, also, I was using these Luca bamboo needles. I'll show you, it's kind of hard to see. Um, they are so beautiful. These are the first knitting needles I bought. When I started knitting a couple years ago, I wanted a knitting needle set and the yarn shop right near my house had these and I saw them online too. And they were so beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. The bamboo, it just looks so organic and natural. I just loved it. It's like this gorgeous grayish brown color. It's just so elegant and it's everything you want your knitting needles to look like. So of course, as a complete novice, I bought the whole set. And this is not an inexpensive investment. I mean, I think they're over $200. I was also sold because I read that, you know, using wood or bamboo slows you down. And when you're starting, you're so scared of dropping a stitch or anything that the idea of something slowing me down or being more, you know, difficult was glorious. And at that time, I had no conception that I would improve my skill set, and maybe I didn't want to be slowed down, or I didn't want such a grippy, um, a grippy material in my needles. Um, that's one thing, and then the other thing is, I'm sad to say, the cords on these are just awful. I mean, they are just so tight, and they hold that coiled shape so much. It is a nightmare, and before I knew any better, I just thought that's how knitting needles were. And then I don't remember if I just bought a single Chowgu knitting needle. Um, yeah, I think that's what happened. I must have bought a fixed round circular Chowgu um, stainless steel needle, and I just couldn't believe the difference. I mean, not only were my skills getting better and the stainless steel felt so much smoother with my yarn. It just felt like the perfect melding of the needle and the project and the yarn would kind of become one and so seamless that you don't even realize you're using the tool. The tool is just like part of you. That's how I feel about Chowgu's. And I completely was sold and bought myself an interchangeable set and that's what I use all the time. But when I have a smaller circumference project where the, the cord is only like 16 inches 
and it doesn't, it's too small to coil up on itself, then I use these. Um, and so, because I feel guilty. I, if you watched my last episode, I talked about how guilty I feel when I have unused yarn or unfinished projects. I don't even know if guilt is the right word. It's just, I feel like I'm not using the resources that I have. And that's how I feel about this Luca in interchangeable set. So when it suits a project, I bust them out. And this is one of those projects. It was perfect. Not to mention, because I was using light colored yarn, um, you can see the yarn perfectly fine on these darker needles. I found that if you use darker yarn on these needles, and like especially if the light's not great in the winter, it's really hard. Um, you can't see the yarn against those needles. That's not even something I'd ever considered. It's one of those live and learn lessons. Um, so anyway, I digress onto that Luca um, track just because I remember when I was a beginning knitter, I wanted that information of like what people thought about various um, interchangeables or needle sets because it makes such a difference. I mean, that is our tool as knitters. That is what allows us to spend our hours and hours of time knitting and you don't want to be fighting your tool. You want to be feeling one with your tool. So in this project, I felt like the Lucas were awesome. Um, I have even heard of people's, and this happened to me once, like the little join right here completely breaking off, which is just, oh my gosh, it's really a shame because these, like I said, they're not cheap needles. Um, as for the yarn, this is Pearl Soho Season Alpaca, uh, which is this absolutely gloriously soft, like I said, I think it's DK or light worsted. It is Superwash Baby Alpaca, I believe. I got it. It was stash yarn that I had, which was like a double perk. So I was using my needles that I never used, using stash yarn. It was like a perfect situation for me. I was so thrilled to cast this project on. And I love this yarn, you guys. It is, well... Let me do a pros and cons on this yarn. Pro, it is so soft. And if you're a knitter, I've never heard of a knitter that's like, I love scratchy yarn. I know we all love rustic yarn or we love woolly wools or whatever, but we still like even those rustic woolly yarns to feel soft. This is not a rustic woolly yarn. This is like a cloud of angels dropped onto this earth and made yarn. It is so soft. I have no, I'm not sure I've ever felt yarn softer than this. It was like, is this too good to be true? So anyway, let me finish what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm knitting this up. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like this yarn, if this yarn doesn't pill, this is like holy grail level yarn because Pearl Soho's prices are good. It's, um, they have beautiful colors. This is a weight I love to knit in because it's not too bulky. It's not too thin. It's just like the Goldilocks. However, live and learn. The softer the yarn, the more it pills. And the more I worked with this yarn, the more I was like, I just cannot imagine a world in which this yarn does not pill because it is that soft. Um, so, so far, so good. It has not pilled. However, I got to the bottom and I wanted to make it a little bit longer, but alas, I ran out of yarn. And I had initially got this yarn when I was a baby knitter for hats. I had bought enough to make hat, matching hats for my whole family. I started with a hat for my husband. It was a Pearl Soho pattern. It was just like a really simple ribbed hat, nothing fancy. And then I learned the hard lesson that Superwash Baby Alpaca is not a great idea for hats. Um, it is not a very structured yarn. A part of its softness is that it doesn't have a lot of 
um, holds a body. It's like very silky and drapey, which makes it glorious in its own way, but it's not going to be great for a hat. And the hat turned out totally awful. Um, I was struggling with magic loop at that point and I got a lot of laddering. It was just, it wasn't good. So when I was on vacation, I got to this point where the tank top was long enough, but I really wanted it to be longer. I um, was like, okay, I'll just rip that hat back when I get home and finish it up and that'll be plenty for the I-cord bind off. And then, you know, you, this is where I am right now, where you pick up and knit the collar, the I-cord collar, and then you do the same around the armholes. Um, and I was an epic fail. I tried desperately to unpick the hem. I couldn't. Then I tried to just like cut part of the top and it was a complete and epic fail. I could not get the hat to unravel in a way that I could rewind that yarn and use it. I need a lesson. See, these are the things about being a knitter, a new knitter, that are like, you hear other people talk about this, like I hear it on other podcasts or wherever that, oh, I just, I didn't like that project, so I just ripped it out. And I've done that before successfully, but I've never done it unsuccessfully. And I felt really dumb, honestly. I was like, how can I not know how to unravel this project? It just, it didn't make sense, but I didn't. And it was such a mess that I threw it in the trash. And I hate even saying that out loud because as someone who doesn't like to waste, it felt so wasteful, but what are you gonna do? I mean, there was no easy solution to that hat. Um, but it left me with a project that was 98% finished without enough yarn. So long story short, I tried it on again and I thought, you know what, this is long enough. For a project, the two options are bind off and do the I-cord trim and bind off with a contrasting yarn or spend $30 plus shipping on a yarn that possibly will pill like crazy and will defeat the whole purpose of a stash busting project because I would undoubtedly have a ton of that skein left and round and round we go. This is like the perpetual conundrum of being a knitter. You just, you're trying to stash bust and then sometimes you need a little extra and then you just ended up with even more than you had in your stash to begin with of a yarn you're trying to use up. And if it had been a yarn that I was certain wasn't gonna pill, I would have bought it in a heartbeat because like I said, I love this gray color, I love the feel of this yarn, and I would love nothing more than to have basic tank tops in this yarn as like second skin. It just, it's so lovely. That's like, that's why we knit, right? We love the feel and look of our garments. But anyway, I wasn't gonna spend that money if without that guarantee. So I just picked this random skein in my stash. I thought I didn't want to overthink it as I tend to do, like take three days to decide what color contrast color. No, this is classic navy and dove gray, win-win. So here we are. I am, I've bound off the bottom. I am on the collar here. It looks super messy right now. I hate showing it in this stage, but you know the magic of blocking. It'll it'll end up looking beautiful. But by next week, this should be off the needles, and then I will start wearing it, and we will start our Pearl Soho Season Alpaca Does It or Does It Not Pill experiment, and I shall report back because I really want to know. And here's the deal. I wanted to know so bad that I looked it up on Ravelry, and I scoured people's projects that they had posted with this yarn and I found it. I found this one person who had knit a sweater and said in the notes of their sweater, this yarn pills so bad that it looks like I knit this sweater like a decade ago when it's only been a month and I have barely worn it. So. I fear we might have our answer. Um, not everybody said that on Ravelry, so I don't know. I shall tell you what I find out. Um, like I said, I will wear it no matter what because it's so soft. 
Um, and I know we all have those clothes that we wear in our daily lives. They're not like our nicest going out clothes. But ironically, I think those are the pieces we wear the most. Um, at least that's how it goes for me, which brings me to what I'm wearing. Um, this is the Home Cardigan by Kadri. I wore it purposely because um, it ties into this camisole project a little too neatly. Um, I made this a year ago. I must have finished it just a year ago because I remember knitting this on our ski trip uh, for 2021, going into 2022. Um, I was so excited about it. I wanted just a basic cardigan. Um, I talked about this in my last episodes. I love cardigans. I love to be able to just throw them on. Um, there's nothing better to me than just having layers that you can pull on and off. I live in Colorado. It's cold, even sometimes in the summer. So, you know, it's just nice to have a cardigan that you um, can take on and off easily. And this fit all the things. I wanted something in a little bit of a bulkier yarn. This is made out of air and weight yarn. I wanted something that sat, you know, at the waist, had a button band, all that. Yes, yes, yes loved it. It was one of my first cardigan patterns. I Ned, Ned, this is my first button band, which is not perfect by any means, but I'm still so proud of it. It's just like you feel so good when you can make something as, you know, utilitarian as a button band. I don't know. It feels, I feel proud of that. However, back to the yarn. This yarn is Manos Dale Uruguay, I'm sure I'm butchering that. Um, Maxima Base, I believe it is called. I don't remember what the colorway was. I found it at um, one of my local yarn stores and it was so soft. If you haven't noticed, I'm a sucker. It was a single ply. Um, it has like, it's grayish purple, but it has like a very, um, tonal kind of quality to it. You can see here, it's just, I love this colorway. I love the feel of the yarn, but it pills like nothing else. Like that Ravelry um, project said, it looks like I made this 15 years ago and it's only a year old and it is just atrocious. And I'm not kidding, I de-pilled this right before I sat down to, to talk to you. Um, it doesn't matter, it's just going to pill. Um, so even that yarn store, we ch I chatted about it with them and they were like, we stopped carrying that yarn because it's, it's just, that's the worst quality. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to spend hundreds of dollars on yarn. Um, maybe you do, maybe it doesn't bother you. And then that's awesome because it does have this beautiful halo, just like that season alpaca has a lovely halo, but that's just not enough for me. I want something to look lovely, you know, especially just after a year. Uh, but the greatest irony of the whole thing is that I am not kidding. I don't think a day goes by in the winter that I don't wear this. I wear it every single day especially in the evenings. It's just so cozy, that air and weight, and it's so soft. There's not a single bit of itchiness. It's always what I put on over my pajamas um, once I change into them. It's even this on our ski trip, I took it and I wore it to dinner. I didn't even care that it was pilling. It's just so comfortable. It's the most comfortable um, cardigan and I am undoubtedly going to knit another one this year. I'm going to find that yarn that like holds up but is still soft and I'm gonna make it again. I'm gonna make it again. It's on my list. So anyway, love the home cardigan, love the home camisole. Let's see if in 2023 I can get it together for this home series. She's got home cardi, home sweater, home cami. I love it all. I love her very classic aesthetic. It's so simple and beautiful. And those are the pieces that I think we end up wearing. I think this is why people love petite knit. It's, you know, sometimes you want fun, funky, memorable pieces, but sometimes you just want a gray cardigan. And those are the things we end up reaching for. So one of my goals this year is definitely 
to knit more classic, beautiful, wearable pieces that are simple, but just you turn to time and time again. So yeah, that's that. That took longer, see, 25 minutes, and I've been talking about the very first thing. I haven't even gotten to my Trinigan. Speaking of, let's get to it. I have it right here, I'm gonna grab it. It is not done, but I made so much progress. I'm so thrilled I knit so much on this trip. It was so exciting to me. Almost done with that. And I'm almost done with this. I just love it so much. It's really hard to see because it's quite big now. I finished the entire body. Um, I am finished the sleeves and the ribbing. And I think it was Monday, I was doing the dreaded task of picking up stitches for the collar. I don't know if anybody else um, feels like it's a dreaded task, but I do. It's high pressure, y'all, with a cardigan this big. You've got to pick up over 220 something stitches evenly. It's just, it's not my favorite thing. I've talked about before, I don't like picking up stitches. It has to be done, but I will never pick a project again, knowing that it has a lot of picked up stitches. Like a collar, what are you gonna do? It's just part of the process, but um, it is not my favorite part of the process. So what happened was because all of this mosaic knitting is done, here we go. It is all done in stockinette. So the edges roll, obviously, a lot. That's not obvious. I don't know why I said that's obvious, but that is what stockinette does. It'll start rolling at the edges. So you always have, that's why we, you know, we have ribbing or whatever. That's what the button band will do or the collar is make it all lay flat. But the rolling makes it really hard to pick the stitches up evenly, even more than it already is. So, Stupidly, I decided, I think it was Monday, it was such a busy day, we're trying to get back into life at home, you know, refilling my refrigerator and cooking and doing laundry and unpacking, get the kids ready for school this week. And of course, eight o'clock at night or something on a Monday, I'm like, I haven't knit a stitch today and I'm going to pick up this bun band if it's the last thing I do. It didn't work out. I did it, I spent way too much time, and then I knew it wasn't turning out great, and I counted the stitches, and one side had, despite the fact that I followed Drea Renee's advice and, you know, put stitch markers evenly around to, to break up the number of stitches. So instead of saying I have, say, 200 stitches, you split it up into 20 sections and then you know exactly how many you've got in each. It still didn't work out. It was completely uneven. And then I was like, well, I could, you know, reduce some on this side on the first round and add some on that side. And then I was thinking, I have worked so hard on this. This is not a throwaway pattern. This is yarn I bought specifically, invested resources, of money and time and love, and I want it to be perfect. And I ripped that collar out, those picked up stitches. And I decided, again, I should have known better because I love Dre Renee, you know, she's my fairy yarn mother. And I, she always says, if before you pick up stitches, it is a great idea to block so everything is laying flatter and more relaxed, and then you can pick up stitches so much easier. So I did that. So this is post first block, and it is, I have to block it again once I do my collar, and that's fine. It's still wet because it's so cold right now in the winter that things are taking forever to dry. Um, normally here, it's so dry. We have such dry mountain air that it will, things will dry real quick, but in the winter, it's just not working out like that. But anyway, um, I have to say the magic of wet blocking, it never ceases to amaze me. It's so transformative. I ask you, I challenge you to find anything else in life 
that is so simple yet so transformative? I would like to know. I'm serious. If you can think of anything, not just knitting, just life, because I'd be right in that, on that bandwagon because you would not believe the difference in this cardigan. It's like a clenched fist to a relaxed hand. That was the difference. It just, all that yarn is, it's almost like seized up. It's, especially when you have color work or this is mosaic, all that yarn is just like bunched up and it just, it was beautiful even then, but it is so stunning now. It is just relaxed and you can see the color so beautifully. I just, I can't stop looking at it. I love it so much. Um, I know I've talked about this in both of the last episodes. Um, so I don't want to, um, you can go back and watch those if you're interested a little bit more in the colors. I'll just quickly say they are spin cycle. The background is versus in the colorway. Here we go. I think it's hot and heavy. It is hot and heavy. Yes, it is. And the, the contrast color is spin cycle dream state in the colorway love spell and OMG. J'adore it. Look at that, y'all. Oh my God. This was, as I said, my first foray into spin cycle. Girlfriend did not disappoint. It is just so beautiful. I, I just, it's like a pastel rainbow dream. It's my favorite color is rainbow. And this is just, look at that from far. You just see that gradient. Oh my gosh. Somebody, a lovely, lovely, um, a viewer posted a comment on my last video saying, I just don't get the deal with dream state. Like what's the deal? It's, um, and I totally get that sentiment. Like sometimes there's something that everybody's going on and on about. And I'm like secretly thinking, I'm just not getting this. This is not one of those things. I, I really see, I really love this yarn. You know, she said, um, she felt like it just felt like cotton. And I, totally get what, um, why somebody would say that. It has, this yarn has a different feel than other yarns I've worked with. I would not say it necessarily felt like cotton. It just feels very wooly. It maintains its wooliness. And what's crazy is one of these is um, superwash. One of the, I think, I don't know. I don't know which one is which. One of them is superwash and one of them is one of them is non-superwash. And normally the difference between those two is vast. I mean, you could normally I would have said I could pick out a non-superwash and a superwash in my sleep. I mean, there's just a completely different hand feel to um and like uh what happens when you wet block superwash versus non-superwash vastly different. Uh, superwash just tends to stretch out so much. It just doesn't have, because it's been treated with so many chemicals, it doesn't have that same structure left. I am not a wool expert, so I'm not, I'm not speaking as a wool expert. I'm just speaking kind of anecdotally. One thing I loved about Spin Cycle is that the superwash doesn't have that quality. I don't love that. I want my wool to feel wooly. Um, I like that their superwash and non-superwash feel pretty much the same. They both have this wooliness. Once I blocked it and it relaxed, it's just, it's just stunning. I really love it. Um, I also love how rather than a colorway, it's more like a color story or a color mood. It's um, each skein within that colorway is so different. One color, one ball of yarn might have a color that doesn't show up in any of the others, which happened with the dream state, the love spell. Um, and I just loved working with that. It was such a joy to see those colors unfold, to see the interplay. I loved that the sleeves are both different, that the sides are both different. I love that subtle um, difference, the color play, the way it unfolds, the way you can kind of decide, oh, if this, 
I want this color to be more prominent, so I'm gonna use it when I'm doing this front panel. Um, I don't know, I love color so much. It sounds so weird, but color is, and I don't think it actually sounds weird. You know, we're, color is such an animating force and we're so attracted to certain colors by nature. I just think it's inherent. Like my love for pink is not because I'm a girl or I was conditioned to love pink. No, I just love pink. I can't help it. I would, I would love a more sophisticated color to love, but I don't. I love pink. And just to watch those colors unfold and interact with each other, especially with the, like how funky and mismatched this versus hot and heavy is. It's like a bright, bold um, purple and coral versus this dreamy pastel rainbow. It's just, it's stunning. I don't know. I'm rambling. I'm rambling in the way one does when one loves something deeply. I have so much of this dream state left. I don't know if I didn't make mine as long as her recommendations. I really thought I did. Um, I have a whole ball and a half left. I couldn't believe it. I think I'm going to make matching flicker and flame hats for my daughter and I. It's a Drea Renee color work pattern. Um, that she made a couple, I don't know when she released that, but I love it. And I think it would be gorgeous in this, uh, with this color. And I think you've already picked up, I like finishing my yarn balls. So yeah, next up on um, this project, I'm really hoping I can finish it this weekend and have it ready to show you finished. And wearing it next week is the collar. Once I get those stitches on in a way that I feel confident, I know that it will fly off my needles because it's just a two by two rib and it's I can take that to anything, anywhere I go and it will get done and I can't wait. I had other things to talk about with this, but I'm gonna do it later because time is a ticking. So say bye to Trin again when you see her next. She shall be complete. I'm jinxing myself. I hope she shall be complete. Um, what else? Ooh, I'm just making sure I have my little notes here. I have to make sure because I'll start rambling and then I forget what I was supposed to talk about or what I wanted to talk about. Um, I wanted to talk about the fact that I left 2022 with three unfinished projects. One is the MCAL, Stephen West's Twists and Turns MCAL from last year, which I talked about, which is not stressing me out because I'm halfway done. I finished clue two and I have two more clues and I know I want to finish it, but I am gonna save it for late spring because there's a lot of winter knitting that I want to do right now with heavier yarns, sweaters, cardies, hats maybe, like the Flicker and Flame, because I want to wear them in the winter. I know that that shawl is something I will wear more in the spring and summer. It's fingering weight, so it doesn't haunt me. It is sitting there and being patient and beautiful, and I shall pick it up when I am ready. But there were two other projects that were not in that category. And one of them, I picked up a bit in December to work on here and there. And then I don't know why I picked it up when, in gen when I got back from our trip a couple days ago and I finished it. I, the joy of finishing a project that has been haunting you. Oh, there is no greater joy. Well, maybe there is, but is one of the joys of a knitter. And I am so excited. I feel like I'm bringing some guests on stage. It's right here. Oh, it is. Oh shoot, I think there's like one end I have to weave in. But that's okay, we'll still call it finished. It is blocked. It is the Hedgehog Fibers um, Puffball Wrap. <sighs> Y'all. When this came out, 
I love hedgehog fibers. I love um, their yarns are stunning. I love the owner. I think her, her name is pronounced Betta. I don't know. Betta Jezik. She is so adorable and so creative. And I love all their yarns, but I also love all the patterns she puts out that are so generously free um, on their website. If you go to their website, there's all these free patterns showcasing their stunning hand dyed yarns. And, you know, she does a lot of um, projects where they're faded. So it just showcases all these great yarns. There's a great, a lot of them are great stash busters. This was not, but when this puffball wrap pattern came out, the Sex in the City reboot and just like that was in the middle of its first season or it was on. And back in the day when I was a younger gal, I loved Sex in the City. I love Sarah Jessica Parker still. Um, and of course I was going to watch it, whether it was good or not. I'm going to watch anything that comes out. And it was fine. We don't need to go into it and just like that review. But there was one episode where Carrie has this blanket. It's not one episode. I think it's a couple of episodes where she has this gorgeous blanket. And any, first of all, if you're a knitter or a crocheter and you were watching that, you were like, oh my God, what is this gorgeous hand knit? Because I'm sure you all know, even if you didn't watch the show, there's not a lot of hand knits on that show, I don't think. It's a very high fashion kind of vibes on that show. But even one of my dear friends who has no, she appreciates knitting, but she doesn't knit, was like, what is that blanket? It is stunning. I thought the same. And then lo and behold, Hedgehog Fibers dies up a, well, I don't even, I think they came out with the super bulky yard. Maybe they already had it, but dies up a colorway like exactly like the colorway of the blanket that Carrie had on the show and put out a free pattern for a wrap to mimic the vibe of that blanket. If that doesn't make you believe it a higher power, I don't know what does. I was just, I couldn't believe it. It was kismet. I saw it on Instagram, on her Instagram, and I just was floored and unsurprisingly like the next day I bought yarn that hedgehog fiber super bulky and cast it on as soon as I got it back from as soon as I got it in the mail so here it is it is so beautiful you guys it's it's huge it took four balls of their super bulky uh, which I think are 150 grams, I, I 82 meters each. Um, I thought four balls was super reasonable. I do not want to knit a blanket. So I was so thrilled that it was a wrap instead of a blanket. And in the show, you know, it has this fabulous fringe and she did the fringe, but I love how the fringe is only on one side, only on the shorter side. It is a completely easy breezy garter stitch pattern. But oh my gosh, this yarn is so beautiful. Look at those speckles. It's the most delicate of dusty rose pink kind of color. And it has these turquoises and fuchsia pops and um, lime green and orange. It is just, I couldn't, sometimes when I pick a colorway, I end up having like all these second thoughts. This was not one of those times. It took me forever. They have so many stunning colorways. One of which, my one of favorites of all time, Sorbet and Daydream. I think I talked about those last time. Sorbet is, I had made that bralette that I was wearing last time out of Sorbet and many other things. And then Daydream is like this barely there, soft, soft lavender with orange and lime speckles. So I almost went with that as like my signature colorway vibes, but I'm so glad I didn't because this has the same, I think I'm just really drawn to very muted pastels with pops of neon. It's like the best of both worlds. I mean, who doesn't want 
I don't know. It's the best of both worlds. So this goes in that category. This goes in favorite colorways of all time. Um, puffball is the colorway. It's called the puffball wrap. What else do I want to say about it? Why did it take me so long? Why was it languishing as I'm raving about it? It's languishing because I have discovered I don't love knitting with super bulky yarn. There are so many cute projects. There are so many designers out there that just mostly design with these gorgeous, super bulky yarns. And I get why. Who doesn't want a sweater that knits up in a weekend? But I mean, like two rows of this is equivalent to, you know, a hundred rows in mohair or fingering. I exaggerate, not a hundred, but you know what I mean. But it's something about like the way you have to grip and manipulate that big yarn. It just, it's not great for my hands. I've talked about before, I have like, I don't know, I, I have a lot of tension um, in my neck and my arms and like using those, you know, either super bulky or super tiny like mohair alone, it just, it doesn't do great for my hands. So I couldn't just sit and watch a show with my husband and knit on this, even though that's what I wanted it to be because it's mindless garter stitch back and forth. It should have been done in two weeks, but it wasn't. I just kept having to put it away and I'd have to kind of um, take bite sizes of it so that I wasn't overstressing my hand because I've had times, I think I talked about this last time where I had to take two weeks off of knitting because my hand was so messed up and that is not good for my mental health. I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. Like me without knitting is not cute. So, I will j'adore this piece forever, but I will not be, sadly, will not be knitting again with super bulky yarn. If you are someone who doesn't have a problem with it, I highly recommend this yarn. Again, I believe it is single ply, so I shall report back if it pills. I don't know, but to be honest, this one won't bother me that much because it's so like, like more of a blanket than a shawl. Like this is something I you have been since I finished it and since it dried off the blocking mat, I've been wearing every time I get in the car because it's so cold in my car, no matter what is so cold. I cannot tell you how cold it is in the morning. It's like when I take my kids to school, I'm just like an icicle. So it doesn't matter. I always take this and it's so cozy. It's like my kids can grab it and wrap it around them. My daughter absolutely loves it. She thinks the fringe is hilarious and fun. And let me tell you the best part of this fringe is that it uses up every scrap of yarn. I don't like leftovers. This goes with my theme. I'm learning so much about myself. I don't like leftovers. I want to use it up. I used up every single solitary scrap and Thankfully, even in, in my stash, I had some old, old, super bulky yarn in this really light pink colorway. I think it was Malabrigo's um, Rasta. It's um, because I didn't, I ran, I didn't have enough yarn to make as much fringe as I wanted to make it as full as I wanted to. So I used some of that pink and it blended in perfectly and you can't tell a thing. And I love it, love it, love it. Um, I still have like one end to weave in, but I'm going to put it around myself. Look how gorgeous it is. It just makes me so happy. I don't know if anybody else just thinks garter stitch is just the most perfect thing in the world. I just love the way it looks so much. It's so, you know, stockinette is so classic, but so is garter stitch. It's so lovely. Um, so that is the puffball wrap. Now I only have one project haunting me and I'm not going to talk about that right now because I am not going to spend the time. I want to, I want to be able to go into depth about that. So stay tuned. What's the last project haunting me? What is, am I going to finish it? Am I going to learn the lessons I need to learn from it? Stay tuned next time on just another knitting pod. Um, here we are, end of episode. Um, I like to finish with talking about what's in my ears. I love knitting so much and my favorite thing is having something in my ears, somebody else telling me a story or interesting things um, while I knit. It's just the best. 
Um, I think last time I had talked about Gabrielle Zevin's book, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, that was published last year, I believe, and was on numerous bestseller lists and is one of my favorite books of all time. Undoubtedly, top three. I, I can think of one other, but it might be top two. I loved it that much. Um, I will listen to it again. I might even just want to read it again to like absorb it from a different point of view. It was so rich and gorgeous. But anyway, my point in bringing that up again is I loved it so much that I wanted to dive into her backlog. And first of all, she is too young to be as brilliant as she is. I'm not jealous. I'm just saying She's extraordinarily young and so just beautiful and lovely. And I loved reading interviews with her because I want to crawl inside her brain. And realized I think that was her 10th book, which is so, I just love that because book number 10, she hit it big. She is on everybody's lips. She is a wildly successful, she was wildly successful before, but now like she's, I don't know, she just entered a different realm, but that's 10 books. Like that's a commitment to her craft that some authors might've been like, maybe this isn't my thing. But anyway, I just am so grateful that she kept writing until this book came out of her. Um, and I am reading the, I believe it's called The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey, which is, I don't know if the book she wrote right before Tomorrow Times Three, um, but I'm listening to that now and it is beautiful and completely different than tomorrow. Um, it has sort of like a fairy tale feel to it. And um, I love the narrator. It's so beautifully narrated and written and just completely different. I really like it so far. It's a lot shorter. I think it's like half the size of tomorrow and tomorrow. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I am not done. I'm kind of trying to pace myself because it is shorter and I don't want to finish it so quick, which is always a sign that you love a book um, and you don't want it to end. Um, so I recommend that, uh, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery. Um, not in my ears, but in my on my TV. <sighs> I know a lot of you probably share like, the love of a great TV show. Um, I think the one of the best things about Netflix and Hulu and all those Apple TV and all those services is just suddenly you don't have to just, I've never been a big movie person. It's just hard for me to like have, a, especially like at this stage in my life with kids and stuff, it's, it's like having a three hour chunk. There's just never a time. I mean, at night, there's no way I'm gonna stay up for three hours, I'm sleepy. Um, but a show I can commit to, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it's great, even an hour. But it's sometimes it's so hard to find a show that like you can just fall into, that just pulls you in and makes you wanna stay up all night. And it's been so long since that happened with a TV show for us. And I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but the Hulu show about Chippendales, the fictionalized, it's not a documentary, it's like a, you know, whatever, biopic almost. It is so good. It is so good. I had listened to a podcast about, a podcast documentary about Chippendales a couple of years ago and it was really good, but this is just so compelling. And it's real life and it's not trying to be funny, but it is hilarious at times, like laughing out loud just a complete like blast from the past kind of feeling and it's just so good. I highly recommend. It has literally ruined my sleep this weekend. Not this weekend, this week. School has started and we are watching this and staying up far too late and like I'm, my brain is so awake after that. I've been having so much trouble sleeping and yet I can't stop. I'm like want to know what happens at the end. It's so good. I can't wait to kind of dive into how real this story was and how much like dramatic license they took because it's is just so compelling the acting is so good um highly recommend i love it 
Um, and that's what's um, been in my ears and on my TV and that I wanted to share if you're looking for a recommendation. Um, I have more recommendations, but at 55 minutes, it's time to say goodbye. I was really trying to keep these short, but I'm a rambler and I once I start, it's hard to stop. There's just so much fun stuff to share. Thank you so much if you are still with me right now for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I was so reluctant to start this for so many reasons and it is bringing me so much joy and fulfillment and more meaning to something that means so much to me already. Like knitting is like, my heart might be made of yarn and to share this with you has just brought me more joy than I can even express to you. So if you're watching, thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you know. And even though we're not together in the same room, yarn binds us together, my love. Um, have a lovely, lovely week. I will be back with you next week. I can't wait. I have so much more to share with you. So many plans to explore for this year, the fresh start that is January. I hope you're finding joy in it. Please subscribe so you won't miss anything um, that I bring you. And I will see you next week. Bye.